Hello everybody and welcome back to the United Stand. I'm Sander Seegers, Paul Pogba to force a transfer decision at Manchester United. That's the news and that's what we're going to start off with today. Apparently, uh, Mina Raiola and Paul Pogba know exactly what they're doing in regards to linking themselves to a move to Real Madrid. Uh, recently, you know, it was, it was I think in the international press conferences that Paul Pogba was coming out and saying, no, no, it's my dream to play for a Real Madrid. It's all players' dream to play for a club like Real Madrid. And apparently, Mina Raiola and Paul Pogba know exactly what they're doing. Apparently, it's a calculated decision to do exactly that, um, to force a move at Man Manchester United away from the club. And I think, you know, uh, on one hand, it makes sense. You know, Paul Pogba's got a year left on his contract with a further option to extend, what, a further year. Um, and so on one, on one hand, it does make sense because, um, you know, it, basically what Mina Raiola and Paul Pogba are saying is, either give us a new contract, we might not accept it, but offer us one at least, or... Let us know that you're not, and so we can work on a move with Juventus and Real Madrid or the clubs like that over the next couple of months until next summer. Bang, we can go next summer for a fee. You know how much it will be, we don't know, but we'll go for a fee, right? And so on that, and that sense, it does make sense because. I agree. Manchester United should let Paul Pogba and Mina Raiola know what their plans are. Of course, you can do a little bit of bartering, a little bit of negotiation, but we want clarity. We want an open line of communication between the club and our players. And so I get that, you know, Paul Pogba and Mina Raiola want to know what's going on in regards to his contract. But what I don't get and what I, re what I refuse to accept is the linking and the consistent sort of flirting with other clubs, especially clubs like Real Madrid. If it was Porto, I'd be like... Fair enough. You know, I, I could sort of push my chest out and go, United, we're a bigger club than then I can take it. But someone like Real Madrid who's in direct competition, maybe not at the moment in the sort of league-wise and position-wise, but they're in direct competition in regards to the status of the club with Manchester United. It feels, it doesn't feel good, does it? And he's done it from the day he came here. Well, maybe not the day, but he's done it consistently throughout his time at Manchester United. He's consistently flirted with the likes of Real Madrid, with the likes of Juventus. And it's frustrating to see because because when he came to the club, we all thought that Paul Pogba was going to be the man. You know, there was a romantic element to it, wasn't there? There was always coming back to the club. He, he loves the club. He grew up in Manchester playing for United's academy. He's going to come back and put his heart on his sleeve and play every single game like he wants to die for the club. But that simply hasn't happened. I think, you know, um, at times it is easy to forget because I was going to say... What's he done in a Man United shirt? Well, he has done stuff in a Man United shirt. He scored in a champion in a Europa League final. I wish it was a Champions League final. Um, okay, it wasn't a great goal, but he's still done that in the big game there. Um, that Manchester City game, of course. And if it's easy forget to forget his first season as a whole. You know, his first season as a whole. If Latan Ibrahimovic could actually, you know, this sounds mental, but if he could finish more efficiently, Paul Pogba would have had what thirty odd assists that season. Because I just remember. Over the top, in behind, to feet, bang. It was he was fantastic, Paul Pogba, in that first season. But other than that, since then, what has he really done at Manchester United on a consistent basis to warrant a huge contract, a, a, a sort of wage topping contract, which it will be. He will be the best played player at Manchester United, I expect, if he were to stay and sign a new contract. And so what has he done? I ask you guys, what has he done truly to, to deserve that? You know, and I'm not saying that that's all down to Paul Pogba. I'm not saying that, saying that it, he's, you know, entirely at fault for the fact that it hasn't quite worked out at Manchester United. <clears throat> I, as a Manchester United fan, put a lot of the blame onto the board and onto the club because they haven't necessarily followed up on the dream that they sold Paul Pogba in 2016. They haven't, you know, surrounded him with the talent that he thought that they might do when he joined the club. And so I absolutely blame Manchester United to a certain extent for for why it's not worked out with Paul Pogba, right? Because, yeah, they're not sort of exempt of any blame. But Paul Pogba, does, that's a difficult name to keep saying, Pogba deserves criticism. Absolutely, as for why it hasn't worked for him at Manchester United. And uh, yeah, listen, if it was, if he would kept coming out and saying, oh, I love the club, I love the, maybe someone like Ander Herrera. Remember Ander Herrera kept coming out and saying, oh, how much of a fan he was of the club and he loved the club and da da da. And maybe his actions showed otherwise off the pitch in regards to, you know, maybe requesting a higher a contract that maybe he didn't deserve and then going to Paris Saint-Germain. That doesn't scream with someone who loves the club. But on the pitch and off the pitch vocally, he clearly showed an admiration and a love for the club. And if Paul Pogba did that, I could probably accept slightly 
underwhelming performances on the pitch. Even though I shouldn't, I could probably accept it because I'm like, oh, what's he like, Paul? You know, he, he's not playing that well at the moment, but he does give it his all. He does love the club, doesn't he? But he doesn't do that. He doesn't do that. He consistently flirts with other teams and other clubs and other managers, um, meeting up with Zidane and you know people like that who, yes, I understand you can meet up with a French legend, you're French. I understand. I get it. But at the time, it was just it just felt so off and off the mark, and it doesn't doesn't feel right to me. Um, and so you know, going into this season, I thought he was gone last summer, and actually, actually, Fabrizio Romano has come out and said that if it wasn't for the coronavirus pandemic this summer, Paul Pogba would no doubt be a Juventus player now. Um, and so, what does that tell you about his ambitions and his and his sort of intentions at the club? I think that's that's pretty clear, but it should be pretty clear anyway. People in the past have said, you know, oh, um, Paul Pogba's never come out and said anything about the fact that he wants to leave. Well, he basically has now, but he's never said it. Yeah, but his, his family have, and his family didn't only say it once. If his family and his brothers and his agent said it once and they were out of line and it was an independent thought, Paul Pogba could go up to them and go, listen, slap on the wrist. What are you doing? It's my career. Stay out of it. Uh, we don't need this at the moment, especially, I think, when, I can't remember what game it was, but it was right before a match day, right before a match day, right before a kickoff, and his agent, Mina Raiola, was coming out saying he wants to leave, I, was, I think he was criticising Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, it, it just wasn't what we need, and if that happens once, as I said, Paul Pogba, slap on the wrist, that's not what we're all about here at the Pogba camp, St you know, wind your neck in and stop talking about it. But that didn't happen. They consistently come out and say and link Paul Pogba to, to, to other clubs and to other managers and criticise Manchester United and criticise the board. I like that. But do you know what I mean? Not the manager and the players and the team. It's frustrating, which makes me think the fact that it hasn't stopped after an isolated incident makes me think that it's actually Paul Pogba, but that's behind these words to an extent as well. Do you, know, do you, know, do you get where I'm coming from? Because if it happened once, surely Paul would say, stop that. That, that doesn't happen again. And then it doesn't happen again, but it's consistently happened over the years. And so that's what makes me think that actually Paul Pogba's never, you know, despite him necessarily not directly coming out and saying that he wants to go, he has. He basically has done that. And that's what's so frustrating to me. I think there's no doubt about his talent. No doubt about it. Again, I want to throw it over to you guys in a minute, but I, I'm passionate on this subject, right? Um, there's no doubt about his talent. It's just the consistency that has let him down. And also the, the commitment to the shirt. I think at times, yeah, he has thrown himself into the club. But for me, the flirting with other clubs has never sat well. Has never sat well. And I actually think it's pretty inexcusable, to be fair. I think it's pretty inexcusable to be at a club like Manchester United and treating it like a stepping stone to flirt with other single other clubs. I don't like it at all. But... Again, I'll say, I don't think all the blame lies with Paul Pogba. I think a lot of it lies with the club. But regardless, I think it's the right time for him to go. I think we should have got rid of him before. I think we should have got rid of him before. Again, not because he's a bad player, but because I don't think he's working at Manchester United for one reason or another. I don't actually know whether he fits into the, uh, the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer system in the midfield with a three um, and, and, and with, with Bruno Fernandes, who's clearly his main guy. So frustrating times to be a Manchester United fan as a whole, but especially in relation to Paul Pogba. Reading out your uh, super chat, Sarvesh says, get Pogba out of the club. My only regret is he might go for free. Van der Beek will step up and call back Garner from loan for the bench. I don't think he'll go for free because if, if well, he, imagine he did. Imagine he does. Imagine he stays at the club for another two years and goes for free. That'd be frustrating. But I don't even know how much. It, I saw a comment saying, oh, yeah, let's sell him for 100 million uh, and, and we'll wipe our hands with him and sort of move on. I don't know if you get 100 million for him now, especially for in the post COVID era. I'd say Jaden Sancho is worth more than Paul Pogba at the moment. I would. I would. I just don't think he's done enough to warrant. He's not progressed since he's come at Manchester United. And so I don't think he's worth 100 million, especially in the COVID sort of era. Um, and so I don't think you get 100 million for him, especially not when he's got a year left on his contract. Um, and so frustrating. I don't think he goes for that much money. I really don't. But again, that's down to one, Paul Pogba for not playing well enough. And two, to man down to Manchester United for leaving him with a year left on his contract. Um, da -da -da. Atman says, Pogba should leave. It will be the best for both sides. We should replace him with a more defensive mid-minded player. Denis Sakaria is a, is a good option. I, I guess I agree with what you're getting out there in regards to, well, you guys know I've just gone on about it for, what, 10 minutes. Uh, you guys know where I stand on Paul Pogba and, and him at Manchester United, but I certainly agree that he doesn't necessarily fit into the system um, that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is trying to create. I think he does if Bruno Fernandes isn't there and Paul Pogba can play on the edge of the box and basically play in Bruno's position. But because Bruno's there and because Bruno's done so well, um, 
Pogba's had to drop back a little bit and I don't think that suits him whatsoever. I know you can say he does it for France, but at Manchester United, he consistently just gives the ball away. I think he's a flair player, so he always wants to show off what he can do, and that's fine when you're on the edge of the box, but when you're in your own half or, or, or around the halfway line and you're fa fannying about with it and you give it a, do a couple of stepovers and you give it away and they've now got you know three on two and they're in on goal, you can't be doing that consistently, and every single time that happens, I think I, re I remember against Aston Villa, um, basically, since lockdown, he's done it consistently giving the ball away in that position and I don't think that's good enough for a player in that position and a player of his supposed quality I don't I really don't and so um, as far as I'm concerned I, I can I would like to see him go I really would I really would and, and I know that's controversial and I know many of you love Paul Pogba and I love Paul Pogba when he signed for the club I was excited more than anyone I really was I remember I was on holiday um, and and I had no Wi-Fi in the little in the little Airbnb that I was staying in and so every single day I'd go down to the uh, the cafe where there was Wi-Fi to check Mark Goldbridge's updates on the United stand to see if he was signing no he wasn't signing today tomorrow no not tomorrow do you know what I mean I was excited like everyone else but it just hasn't worked at Manchester United and I think there's a time and a place and I think now is our time to sort of wipe our hands and say shake hands and say thank you Paul but it's not worked out go on and do your thing which you clearly go and want to do you know you want to go and do it for Real Madrid or Juventus because you can't stop really talking about it Ronald Jacob says we should do a swap deal for Casemiro and Pogba Casemiro is far too old I think Casemiro is a defensive midfielder we actually need that would be a good deal to be done I, I like the way you're thinking uh, but no, <laughs> I don't think we're going to do a swap deal. Swap deals are difficult to do at the best of times, especially not uh, when, you know, when, especially difficult when you're sort of negotiating with a team like Real Madrid and your Man United as well. Um, and Casemiro is not the right player, I don't think. But there you go. Um, Mazukir says, Pogba is a great guy, but still is it's like he doesn't even care. I agree. I'm sure he's a nice guy. I'm sure, I know for a fact he's a fantastic player. But for whatever reason, it just doesn't seem to happen. It doesn't seem to click for him at Manchester United, right? It doesn't seem to happen. It doesn't play. When he goes to France, he plays brilliantly. And I know you could say that's because he's got good players around him. But where, where do you stop the excuses? Where do you stop the excuses? And I just don't think his head's in it. I thought finally, this season, because he didn't go in the summer, I thought, oh, he, he's at Man United now. I thought he's going to sign a new contract. There was whispers that he was open to it, that he was happy, that he was hungry to make it work at Man United. But then he comes out a couple, well, a week ago, not even maybe, coming out saying that he wants his dreams to play for Real Madrid. That's inexcusable, especially in the situation that Man United are in. I understand that you could say, oh, United aren't playing well, so therefore he can go and say that. But no, if you love the club like you say you do, like we all thought you do, you don't come out and, and sort of create more turmoil at the club, and the club is clearly in disarray. It's frustrating to me. I'm sorry, <laughs> I, I sh I've gone on, on about this slightly longer than I probably should have, but it's frustrating to me because I love the club so much and I like players that love the club as well. You don't have to be a Rio Ferdinand or a Patrice Evra who becomes fan of the club. You can just... You can just be a fan. You can no. You can just love the club or play hard for the club or play well for the. He doesn't do any of it. He doesn't play with determination for the club. I don't think, and I don't think he plays that well either. I think he's a great player, probably a great guy. Comes across as a really nice guy, just not worked out at Manchester United. Anyway, Christ on a bike. That was a was a bit of a long conversation, wasn't it? <laughs> Twelve minutes, thirteen minutes. Um. Moving on from him, on to uh, Deo Upamancano. Um, I think he's a fantastic player. I think we all saw what he could do in the Champions League last year. None, none of us doubt the fact that he's uh, he's got the ability to play at the top level. Of course, he's, well, last year was pretty much his breakout season. And so, um, you know, whether we can actually say how consistently good he will be, we don't know. But... I think if he, if he goes on and does something this year, like he continues, like you know, this season, like he did last season, then I think we're on for a fantastic player here. And I think you know the rumours are, the reports are that uh, Upamecano has become Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's top target at centre back to sort out the dodgy defence that we've currently got at the moment. Um, and you know he's got a full. I think we should have got him this year, even if it was for sixty million. I think um, forget Palistri and, and and Diallo and players like that. Go in and get Upamecano for sixty million. I know he's got forty million pound release clause next summer and so it's probably a tough pill to swallow um, in regards to the fact that you're spending 20 million extra and you know what maybe I'm talking football manager terms you know oh, oh let's just go and get him for 60 million it seems easy enough it probably isn't and it probably you know it probably was a bit more than 60 million and whatever from a financial side it probably made sense to hold out until next year but it does feel difficult it's a bit of pill to swallow as a Man United fan doesn't it when uh, we've signed Cavani, Tellers and I think you know Cavani and Tellers we needed them, Van der Beek we 
probably didn't need Van der Beek as much as we need a centre back. But you know, we, they're all good signings. Um, the Diallos and the Palistries is frustrating. But y y if you don't bring in them in, you still don't have a 60 million, do you? So I understand that, that it probably wasn't a wise decision to go from last summer, but. I think we need a centre back so much, and so um, yeah, I'd like to see us going for him next summer. Um, and, and bear in mind, there wouldn't have been any competition this summer because people are waiting for next year. So we had a free run at him, similarly to that we did to Sancho as well, but we didn't go for that either. But um, yeah, he has got a forty million pound release clause next summer, and so apparently we need to go. We're going to go in for him, but the, the sort of transfer hinges on uh, Champions League football. Of course, there's going to be other competitors, and you know he might want to go to anywhere else other than Manchester United, of course. But if United have got a chance, they're going to have a chance to signing up a Mancano, then Champions League football is required at the Theatre of Dreams. And I think um, that, again, is, you know, make no mistakes about it, uh, the Manchester United board haven't only messed up this summer transfer window, they've messed up potentially next summer transfer window because if United don't have a good season, and I think I put a lot of the blame onto the board for that if we don't, of course, the players and the manager and the coaching staff, they all deserve criticism as well. But I think the board will be held culpable if Manchester United don't get top, top four this season. Then next summer is sort of put at jeopardy as well because we can't go and get players like Upamon Kano. So if you don't back Ole Gunnar Solskjaer this summer, it's very difficult to back him next summer because you didn't back him last summer. Do you know what I'm saying? So that's the frustrating point and I think... Um you know, there's there's always going to be long term effects uh, with, with with how the Manchester United board treat Manchester United as a club, and so uh, yeah, that's frustrating. But I'd absolutely love to see us go and get uh, Upper Mancano. I think you know he, he's just he's just got that. X factor about him, and I think it's difficult at times to see a centre back with an X factor. But I feel like Upamecano really does. He's got pace, he's got skill. He looks like he can get forward, um, and and that's just so exciting to see for a centre back. And certainly the style of player that I'd like to see next to Harry Maguire. Whether Harry Maguire can do it long term in a Manchester United shirt, we'll have to wait and see. But if he's going to do it at all, someone like Upamecano next to him will give him the maximum uh, sort of opportunity and, and chance to actually do it in a United shirt. And so. Absolutely. And even if it isn't Aaron Maguire, Upper Meccano next to most people looks like a really good player. And so, um, yeah, certainly a player that I'd like to see come in. And, and what do you guys think? Um, we've talked about Paul Pogba and I've read some of your comments out about that. But Upper Meccano, where do you guys stand on that? Did you guys want to see us sign him this summer? Is there any other centre backs that you prefer over Upper Meccano? Of course, Upper Meccano is still a young player and, you know, you know, we're still to see what's happens this season, but by the end of this season, we'll know what's happened this season. But even if he does do well this season, it's only two seasons uh, that he's done well at in Germany, of course. Um, and so, yeah, let me know what you guys think on that. But I'll read this super chat and then I'll get to your comments in just a second. Shanid, uh, Shanid O'Donnell says, uh, Paul is an obvious talent. This is in regards to Paul Pogba. Uh, he's an obvious talent, but fails to build bridges with some of the fans because he does things like smiles when he gave the penalty against Spurs. Yeah, I mean, you could say the same about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer handshaking everyone against uh, after Spurs. Um, I just think that's the that's the way the sort of the game's gone. I agree. You want players to be fuming and da da da, um, but I think you can accept it. You know, I, I accept it. I don't like it from Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, but I can accept it that he's shaking people's hands after the game because I just think. Well, after the game is easier to accept than during the game, isn't it? If he's going, oh yeah, Solskjaer's loving it, maybe like Klopp was against Villa during the game, that would be quite difficult to accept. But even if he did, I could probably probably stomach it because I love Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's love for the club and the dedication to the club has never been in any doubt. Never been in any doubt. And yeah, the performance is on the pitch, even though I think we're going in the right direction. Well, that is a sticky patch at the moment for United. Under Solskjaer. The performances on the pit, you know, I, I I can forgive that because he loves the club and he's dedicated to the club. And whatever you say about him and his tactics and his da 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 and his coat, doesn't matter. He loves the club. But with Pogba, he can't get away with any of his dancing or, or smiles or da da da. You can't because when you're not winning on the pitch, i.e. yourself or for the team, and you're not coming out and saying that you're dedicated for the club, you've got nothing going for you. You've got nothing going for you. And so the Manchester United fans find it very difficult to stomach that. Um, anyway, sorry, I want to talk about Urban Meccano, but that was in relation to the super chat from Shanid O'Donnell. Thank you, Shanid. Um, da -da -da. Jared says, get rid of Dross and buy Urban Meccano. Yeah, I'd agree. You know, people forget that as well. I think um, you say that uh, you say that it might have been difficult to get him this summer, and I understand. Yeah, maybe we should have waited. We should wait until next summer. But you're going to have so much competition next summer. And if you got rid of Phil Jones, I know it's very difficult because you bloody gave him a five-year contract on monumental wages like a year ago, you 
Muppets. <laughs> um, if you get rid of Phil Jones, you get rid of Chris Smalling like you have done, you get rid of Dolo actually on a permanent deal, you get, I know, again, it's more difficult than, it's, it's sort of easier said than done, isn't it, to get rid of these players that go out on loan because they have got monumental wages and no club probably wants to buy them. But if you didn't get yourself into that position in the first place, you could have sold these players. You could have made up the money for Upamancano and you could have got in this season. And we would have, you know, probably be all right in defence, right? And again, it all goes back to the board. Whether it goes back to the board this season, because again, as I said, it might be difficult to sell the likes of Pereira and Dalo, um, because they're on such high wages. So you can't raise the money for Upamancano. I get that. But then you track it back a little bit further and you blame the board for putting them on the high wages in the first place. It all goes back to the board's ineptitude and the board's incompetence. Um, some fans talk about signing players as if we're going to sign them. That's from Sadiq Toe. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, that's the sort of roast into glass, isn't it? Um, I think we're in for him. 40 million. Oh, clearly, we can struggle for 40 million. We left Tellers the last uh, last day of the transfer window. But um, we'll have to wait and see. I think I think all the top clubs in Europe will be after uh, Upham and Carno next summer. I, I really do. I, re I think he's that good. So we'll have to wait and see what happens with that. But um, we certainly need certainly need a centre-back and, and quick. Um, Crew says Maguire free transfer now. Oh, God. Stephen Dagbana says get Pogba out and we can challenge for a trophy. Um, I don't think it's as simple as that. I don't think it's as simple as getting Paul, Paul Pogba out and trying to challenge him for a trophy straight away, but I'd certainly think it adds, it sort of increases the dynamics. It just it helps the dynamics within the team. Um, I certainly don't think you give Paul Pogba a new whopping contract where he becomes the highest paid player at Manchester United because he doesn't deserve it. So if you don't do that, he's not going to accept your contract, is he? So then don't let him run run on, his contract run out, and then you're going to sell him for free. So you sell him next summer. That, that to me, is, is the only logical conclusion in this situation. Um... And maybe he is sort of aiming for a move. I can't get away from Paul Pog, but I can't get away from it. Maybe he is moving away from a uh, moving for a move, trying for a move away from Manchester United. But there's just a way of doing it, and it just I don't know. It, I just hate the way he's flirting with other clubs. I can't. It, 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 it's just devastating. It's horrible to see. Uh, it makes me angry. It really makes me angry. Ronald Jacob says, Klopp got beaten by seven goals and he was smiling and trying to lift up the team. And when Ole does it, people are saying he's wrong by smiling. People have an agenda against Ole. He is good and I trust in him. I, I, well, I agree with you, Ronald, because um, I don't think smiling as Klopp is the right thing to do. I don't. But Klopp, this is the whole thing. You've got to earn yourself points, right? You can get away with certain things if you earn yourself points. Klopp can get away with it because he just won him a Champions League what a year before and just won him a league title. He can get away with it. He can get away with doing all dance. He can do the Alan Pardew dancing if they go one up. He can do whatever he wants at the moment because he's he's you know the league lead. He won the league last season and won the Champions League the season before that and got to the Champions League final the season before that. He can get away with it. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer can get away with you know shaking everyone's hand after the game because he's shown clear dedication and a love for the club. He can get away with it. Paul Pogba cannot get away with it because he hasn't showed dedication to the club. His performances haven't been good enough and, and he, hasn't won, he hasn't won any trophies, really. You've got to earn yourself these, these luxuries to get away with certain things and Paul Pogba hasn't done it. Um, anyway, I really can't get away from Pogba. This is uh, this is worrying. Um, Martin says, play Pelestri, can't be worse than James. Pelestri is in the Champions League uh, squad, so which I thought was interesting because apparently he was going to come in and play for the reserves or, or the, you know, the youth team. But he is in the Champions League squad, so he's going to be playing. Um, so again, there's your right winger. Do you know what I mean? There's there's your right winger. And why would we go, and Diallo in January as well? They, the way they'd be marketing that as well. Two right wingers there. Forget Sancho. Forget forget Sancho, man. The board have just let Ole Gunnar Solskjaer down. They really have let Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. It's it's just appalling to see. Uh, but we'll move on quickly. We haven't got long left. I'll skip past Cavani for a moment. Um, on to this guy Juan Mata. Um, apparently Juan Mata. Uh, this is coming out from. Um, this is coming out from. Where's it coming out from? I can't remember. There was reports and there was reports this morning that Juan Mata has uh, has actually got an offer of 10 million a year uh, for the to sort of to move to the Far East, Saudi Arabia, I think it was. I can't actually remember, but the Far East. Um, and so, um, yeah, what do you guys think? I mean, that's a permanent deal. Um, apparently, Jesse Lingard could still be going on to port, going out to Porto on loan. Uh, and so, I think if one of them were to go, I'd like to see Jesse Lingard go over Juan Mata. I think Juan Mata still got something to offer us, whether it be an experience or actual quality on the pitch. Um, 
Listen, I think they both should go, to be honest with you. I don't think there's any room for sentimentality in football. And I think Juan Mata and Jesse Lingard aren't up to it in for what sort of, sort of what Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's trying to do. I agree. But if one of them were to go, I'd rather see Jesse Lingard go than Juan Mata go. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. Juan Mata has been offered a, a monumental sort of 10 million a year contract uh, out in the Far East. And, uh, you know, get him off our wages, I guess. 150 grand a week he's on. He's on a big old contract at United. And so... Um, yeah, if one of them were to go, though, I think Jesse Lingard. I mean, what do you guys think? Um, you guys are saying moving on, please, and that you're you know sort of in relation to. Uh, um, sorry, Saudi Arabia is Middle East, not Far East. I do apologise, my geography is pretty bad. So there, you, there you go. I don't, in the Far East, uh, out there, over there, not in Europe. Put it that way. Um, so. Yes, Pogba can leave. Oh my god, <laughs> everyone's on Pogba. Uh, let matter go, but in January, that's from Kristen. Right, sell matter. Um, I apologise. Saudi Arabia is not in the Far East. It's in the Middle East. All right, okay, I do apologise. He's been given a contract that's not in Europe. Okay, I apologise. Um, I can actually check for you if you really want. Um, da -da -da, I'm going to check for you now. Um, according to Ian McGarry on the Transfer Podcast, which is which is quite a credible source, obviously with Duncan Castles, with a lucrative offer of over 10 million a year from the Middle East. Right, I do apologise from the Middle East. Um, if matter size, da -da -da, there you go from the Middle East. 10 million a year from Ian McGarry from the Transfer Podcast. I apologise. Uh, it's early in the morning. <laughs> there you go. How much do we get for Matter? I, it probably, I, don't, I don't know. Pennies, probably. Pennies. Paul uh, Paloth says Matter. And I don't think it matters, to be fair. <laughs> no pun intended. Um, Paul Paloth says Matter is Man United's best midfielder. I don't know why he's not playing week in, week out. I uh, sort of suspect an air of sort of sarcasm around that. Uh, around that. But there you go. Um, what up, Lass? Okay, <laughs> Abinav says people can say whatever they want, but the first three games we have been poor because because of Pogba in that defensive midfielder role. He just doesn't know how to play that role. He's lazy and doesn't read danger. I, I agree. I really, I'm obviously there's so much more to Manchester United's faults at the moment um, than Paul Pogba, but I certainly agree that Paul Pogba has been sort of uh, at fault for a lot of the issues at Manchester United at the moment. Um, just the way he gives the ball away. I can't stomach it. I can't stomach the way he gives the ball away on a sort of halfway line um, and it just exposes the defence. If it happens once or twice, I get it. It happens once or twice. It happens all the time. All the time. Frustrating to see. Um, last two super, super chats. Ronald Jacob says, Klopp got... B oh, right. I've just read that one. Um, and Ronald Jacob with another contribution said, we should let Matter go and maybe add Jones with him as a gift from our side. Matter is class and hasn't been appreciated enough at our club. Matter won the player of the month. <laughs> He won a player of a month, and so yeah, I think he's still got something to offer. But if there was a you know decent deal that came in, you know, get him gone, get Lingard gone on loan. Um, you bring Palestri in, you bring Diallo in, sort of they, that fills. You know, Lingard can play off the right, and so can Matter. So that sort of replaces those two, and I guess that's a good, um, somewhat of an upgrade if Diallo and Palestri go on to do something um, as they develop. So uh, yeah, certainly think it's a good idea to get rid of uh, Matter and Jesse Lingard. But I think if you're going to only get rid of one. For me, it'd be Jesse Lingard. But uh, there you go. Thanks all for joining me this morning on the, uh, well, it's no longer a transfer show, is it? It's just your Saturday, Saturday morning shows with me, Sarna Seegers. So I really do appreciate all of you tuning in. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Um, and we'll be back later with a little show from Mark uh, right throughout the day. And of course, I shall see you probably midweek. But uh, if not, I'll see you guys next